Hey everyone, Tracking Pat here with segment two of AGE programming on the Prototrack SMX. We're going to take over right where we left off the first part where we did all the drilling of all the holes. And now we're going to go and make the actual pocket and show how to use the AGE in order to find the missing dimensions on the pocket. So let's get going on that right now. Okay, so here's where we left off in part number one. And what we're going to do next, you can see I'm in the look section, so I'm just going to push look again to get out. And what we're going to do first is we're going to do that interior profile, only I'm going to do it as a pocket just so you understand some other things that I couldn't teach you if it was a profile. So I'm going to select pocket and say that it's an irregular pocket. Now in order to do an irregular pocket, it has to start and finish in the same place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the far, far right of the pocket at Y0. Okay, you'll see on the print that it shows a dimension of 1.170, but I actually need half of that dimension uh, when I start programming it. So I did the math and divided by two just so you know where I'm at. For right now, I'm going to start at the X dimension, which is 3.910 and Y0. I'm going to use 50 thousandths this time for my rapid. And my ZN, let's say this has got to be a quarter of an inch deep, so I'm going to say minus 0.250. I'm going to do it in two passes to get to the full depth. I'm going to use the zigzag entry mode. And I'm going to leave a finish cut of 10 thousandths. And my RPMs are going to be 2,500 for both the roughing and the finishing. I'm going to use five inches per minute to get into the material, machine it at 30, finish it at 20, and use tool number five. Or, I'm sorry, tool number three. I had too many tools in there. Okay, so now that I've got a starting point, you'll see right here by that green dot, now I'm going to describe the part in the way that I want to machine it. Now, first of all, the order I give is going to determine whether it climb mills or conventional mills. So I want to go around this in a counterclockwise direction so that it climb mills. So the first thing I'm going to do is a milling event. My X is going to stay the same, so I'm going to hit ink set. And my Y is that dimension I was just talking about, which is 0.585. Okay, you'll notice you have an OK light, which says, OK, I know how to do that line. But it's asking if I want to put a radius on the corner. And there is a 0.4 Conrad. The rest of these questions are to help describe that line if I don't know its actual beginning and end points, but in this case I do, so I'm simply going to page forward. You'll notice on the left side that in red it's filled in some of the dimensions I left out. If I look, you simply see a line. So now I'm going to do my next milling event, and it's saying, is this tangent to the other? As I've said in other videos, two lines cannot be tangent to one another, so I can simply push two for no or the machine will automatically default if I just hit the button. The next thing it wants to know is where this end of this line is, and that's what's not on the print. So I'm going to use the guess feature, okay? And then I'm going to push the look button to see where it's at, okay? Now there's two ways to use guess. One is I could say, you know, it's about two inches, and that'll work. Or I can use the look button, which will actually let me drag this over to about where it would be. You'll notice if I do that like so, and then when I push enter, it's going to fill them both in. Now the disadvantage to doing it this way is that it answers the Y too, and I actually need the Y to stay where it was, which is zero incremental. Okay? It's asking for a Conrad, but there is none, and there's no more information on my print in order for me to use with these numbers. So even though it's not okay, I'm going to page forward, and you're going to notice when I push look that it's a dotted line saying what you want to do is somewhere around here, what else can you tell me? So I'm going to say I got to do an arc. It's not tangent to the line. Its direction is counterclockwise. Okay, so I'm going to push two. Its X end goes right back to where I was before. So this time I'm going to show you the other way to use guess. I'm simply going to say, hey, it's somewhere around two inches absolute. And the Y is actually going to be at minus 0.585. Okay, the center of that arc is zero, zero. There's no Conrad, and the radius is 1.365. At that point, you'll notice it says OK, and everything that I didn't tell it is filled in in red. And when I push look, you'll see it's starting to look like the keyhole shape. So I'm going to page forward, do another milling event, which is not tangent. 
my x is going to end back at my original numbers, which is 3.910. Why I'm going to use ink set or no change. There's my OK. I've got a point for Conrad. Page forward. Looks like so. And my last piece is going to connect it to the beginning. So it's not tangent. X stays the same. Y goes to absolute zero. There's my completed pocket shape page forward one last time and push end AGE. So that shows you how to use the pocket and the AGE in order to figure out the dimensions that weren't on the print. So as you guys can see, just simply understanding how the AGE works will help me find the missing dimensions when I have to do something like a pocket. Once again, I wanna remind you like I did um, in the video that you do have to start a pocket from the same point and end it at the same point, otherwise it won't work as a pocket. But in our next part, I'm going to show how to do a AG profile on the outside of the part. And it's going to require quite a bit more of tangent and non-tangent dimensions that are missing on the print. And it's also going to show you how to use a mirror image to get the second half of the part. So I'll see you in the next video. Until then, see you there.